Ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to our uh, program. In this edition, we're going to talk about current issues unfolding here in Ethiopia, especially TPLF's war of aggression, the conspicuous silence by the international communities and others. And my guest today is Professor Brook Hailu Basha. He's a political uh, science professor. He's also media expert. Do stay with us with the program. I'm Shiva Lago. And Professor, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. As you know, mm. the TPLF has waged mm. yet another war. Yeah. You know, leaving the government of Ethiopia mm. uh, no option mm -hmm. rather than to ensure rule of law and also yeah. to protect citizens lives yeah. so as as a political scientist mm -hmm. also and as a mm -hmm. media expert what are the things that you have observed in this regard well uh, once again thank you for having me uh, indeed the last uh, i would say 22 months that is since november 2020 uh, the, uh, have been very critical moments for Eth ethiopia uh, that is the day November 3rd and 4th, that was that fatal day that uh, and openly uh, the former rebel groups, the former TPLF ruling party, uh, unleashed and started a war, uh, you know, moving to the center, you know, attacking federal forces. Ever since then to this day, this has been the topic. Right. Uh, uh, peace, stability uh, are the most important core principles of any country. And these issues are now number one uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, on top of this, you know, there was the first and then the second wave, and now you know, a week and a half ago, I believe, yes, the third wave yeah, yes, third has, has been started. And uh, that is really sad and disappointing to all Ethiopians, whether living abroad or here, yeah. uh, for, this, for the sole reason that, you know, one should give peace a chance. That was not an issue. The United Nations and the African Union were involved, you know, uh, especially <coughs> the AU mandate had the mandate to give peace a chance. Uh, the Ethiopian government on its part had uh, named the seven member committee members. Uh, there were no preconditions uh, to sit around the table, meaning to give a negotiation a chance yeah. to solve the problem. That was um, really unanswered, uh, really just pushed aside. And on top of that, you know, once again, the third wave was started. And now we are literally in a big, massive uh, war where people uh, are dying. The TPLF is shoving aside, so to speak, yeah. the yeah. peace negotiations yeah. uh, offered yeah. by the government. And the international communities seem to be conspicuously silent. Is this, uh, mm. you know, fair in the first place, no. Professor? No. Uh, really, to, to, honestly, it's, it's not fair. It is for the following reason. It's a combination of reasons. First and for, foremost, what's the issue? Yeah. There is conflict. Okay, then what do you do as UN permanent member delegates, as European Union member delegates, you know, to, trying to find a solution? Yeah. So there are two counterparts in this conflict. So what do you do? You approach both of them. Uh, then the, the two uh, sides should be observed if they are really committed to peace and to the peaceful process or not. And um, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, all these countries, the developed countries, they have all the data and the information in their hands. Right. Even the details. Uh, then the negotiation, negotiation process, it took quite a while. And then the designated ambassador, the former president of Nigeria, uh, His Excellency Obasanjo, he was here many, many times. Yeah. <coughs> On the Ethiopian government side, she was not prevented even to go to the regional capital, Makali, you know. He went back and forth. And then the ambassadors, the European Union, you know, and the U.S. Uh, representatives, they went there back and forth, back and forth, you know. So this tells me by itself, as an observer, that, you know, no hindrances were made. Then, what it takes two to tango, as the saying goes, to make peace, it takes two elements. Right. So on the government side, from what we have observed, they went even out of their way, really, to accommodate uh, to, to sit around the negotiation table. If that's the case, then in, in very clear, in not in a very ambiguous way, in a very clear manner, Western, the United Nations as well as Western countries should do what? Should, should uh, call the spade a spade. Right. You know, the Ethiopian government is there. Who is absent? It should be named. One cannot just, just put things aside and then come back and then try to put, you know, the two elements as if, 
as if the rebel groups are a government by themselves. Look, 27 years, this ruling party was in power. Right. And then the people rose up. They said enough is enough. And as a consequence of that, what do we have? A new government uh, took over power within the system itself mm -hmm. you know, in April 2018. Then they were unhappy. You know, they could have played a very constructive role as one significant element within the Ethiopian polity. Rather than do that, what we have observed is the disengagement from the Ethiopian polity, from the Ethiopian political process. What do I mean by that? Look, <coughs> there were members of parliament coming from Tigray region, and most of them are party members, TPLF members. They were told to go back. Look, this right. is a, what strong evidence do you need? Mm -hmm. Second, at the federal level, at least four or five cabinet members were TPLF people. They were also told to do what? To pull back. Do I make sense? Yeah. Then, then they began to openly question the legitimacy of the government in power. They were part of the government itself. Rather than sulk, rather than sulk and, uh, and just um, corner themselves, they could have what? Join the system, challenge the system, put their grievances in front of the Ethiopian people, in front of the Ethiopian federal parliament, in front of the Ethiopian uh, public and audience, right. in front of the diplomats here, and say, we need to talk over this, we need this, we need this, we need this, and then on the government side, there will be a response, and we'll have what? A cultured, I repeat, a cultured, healthy discourse. Rather than be engaged and be engaging, what they chose as a strategy was to, to, what? to sulk and to move away. Mm. That's the wrong strategy. So, I mean, for the West, it is, it is as, as, as clearing and as stark as a day and, and, and nightfall. Mm -hmm. you know, they should have then, you know, t t told um, in point black to the media, a spade is a spade and the faults and the shortcomings of the government and equally of the TPLF. You know, pushing it, not pushing it, that's the wrong word, but, you know, diplomatically, you know, working with it so that Ethiopia's pro problem will be contained rather than explode. So all this explosion in November is the result of what? Disengaging, once disengaging. And then the war started. When the war started, what, what, what Ethiopians, millions of Ethiopians were saddened was the fact here again, when injustice was done, yeah. when, the, when, 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 when this rebel group started the war, I mean, what is, is there a fear, what, is there an anxiety? Or is there a special service or a special kind of uh, looking at things, mm -hmm. trying to just uh, you know to the close your eyes and um, let's move it away the other way, forget, 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 and move, move, move on? No. If it is the Ethiopian government, then they should say so. If it's the rebel TPLF, they should have said point blank. They should have said point blank. The TPLF is wrong, which they didn't. So all this is still continuing to happen. And now, sorry for the this lengthy kind of uh, explanation. Okay. Let me tie it up and connect it with uh, your question, and that's, let's come to not uh, November 2020, but now no, we are now in 2022, yeah. yeah, September, and now what's happening? The war was started for a third time. They moved into the Amhara land and Afar land once again, and there was a, there was a disturbing silence, and now when the tide turned, meaning the military adventure was pushed back, and reversed by federal forces and the um, and, uh, militias and territorial uh, uh, you know, paracommandos of the Afar and Amhara region, region troops, then one begins to move in the direction of saying, hey guys, stop it. And then when one makes a, a statement, statement, one puts uh, the rebel group, we started the whole thing yeah. in equal parity with a government which is bending backwards to accommodate their interest, literally begging them, let's speak. Yeah. Let's sit around the thing. So this is really um, uh, thumbing one's nose to the, to the Ethiopian public. Yeah. Really, I have to put it in a very blunt way. Mm -hmm. One has to be brutally honest sometimes. Yeah. Even among friends, you have to tell you know the, all those big countries, the Western countries, when they do something not good, that's not conducive uh, to the whole thing. They should be told. And mind you, the Tigrayan brothers and sisters are part of us. Nobody is denying that. We are questioning only the behavior and the activities and the actions of a frustrated rebel group. So we should make a clear distinction between a political group which was born in 1974 or rather 75, yeah. which is 40 something years, years old, and the, Ethiopian, uh, the, and the Tigrayan people who are the core of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. We should be very, very clear about that. Mm -hmm. We are not putting everyone in one bag. 
and on top of this, <coughs> what what with the Turkmen public is amazed and shocked is this uh, tender way of you know uh, kids glove when it comes to the TPLF. Right. If something is wrong, then that should be told, and that itself is not good because the West maybe they are missing the picture for whatever reason. By missing the picture, they are missing 114 million people. By focusing on a certain percentage of the Ethiopian population, they are ignoring the majority, the voice, the voices of the majority of Ethiopians. So I think this might backfire uh, on the foreign policy and the diplomacy of Western countries. Because people uh, have, have patience, the Ethiopian people, but they might not have short memories. What you started your question is with this, whatever uh, kind of announcement, yeah. uh, it's not uh, the first and it looks like it's gonna, going to be the last. Mm -hmm. For the last 24, 22 months, we are now being, we are now used to such kinds of uh, writings, the content-wise, putting the, the villain and the, uh, the perpetuator and the, the, the victim uh, in equal terms right. with the perpetuator. So I think um, this is um, something that is a, a sad episode and I do hope that soon uh, corrective measures will be done by those who, who are um, pushing this kind of an agenda. In addition to this, uh, Professor, yeah. we're also hearing about human wave being employed yeah. by the terrorist TPLF. And this is going yeah. on uh, against the backdrop yeah. of uh, exactly. the international community, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah. exactly. keeping silent. Why, why do you keep silent? Yeah. yeah. And the why? other question that yeah. I, I want to ask yeah. you is, yeah. uh, we hear that the international community have yeah. several times failed to yeah. openly denounce the TPLF or call it terrorist group. Yeah. Why so? To uh, respond to address this issue are the respective, um, you, know, you know, advanced developed countries themselves. But let me get back for, for a minute about the human wave. This is unheard of. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, uh, like you know, the First World War European kind of a, a trench warfare, you know. Uh, you know, uh, in international law, you know, whether it's the opposition or the government in power, designated soldiers, they fight each other. But in this case, what is one using is manipulating and using normal people, civilians, and kids, including kids, to put them as a fodder in front of, uh, in front of the, the warfare and the, 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 the war. Yeah. This is itself a big breach of international law, human wave. Yeah. No? If the government of Ethiopia does that, then that is a breach of norms. And we, should, and we are glad that that is not happening so far. Yeah. So what we are doing now is extending the war. And what the Western countries are failing to understand is, you know, it, are, it is getting beyond the control. Putting people in front. Don't we realize that this is like inviting other ethnic groups to do the same thing? Aren't they making it difficult for the government in power, the federal government, you know, uh, put, put the, putting the federal government in, in corner? Because other ethnic groups... You know, it's like inviting them to do what? To use this human wave? Isn't it a dangerous game to play? Yeah. Where is the values of the West? Where is the political culture and the values of the West? Mm -hmm. When things go wrong, that should be told. That should be really underlined. Because it's a very, very dangerous game. You know, hard day. Hard day, let's say. Um, who knows? Rather than now, by the way, it's late, but it's never too late. You know, had, had, was the TPLF condemned last year? Who knows? They might have changed their behavior a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. We might have seen results. But no. Radio silence, as the saying goes. Total silence. And th this has continued in a very, in a very what? Uh, with depth, with um, scope is wide and the depth is wide, and etc. Yeah. So I think this is a miscalculation that, 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 needs, that needs to be... Uh, uh, that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. yeah, the sure. second part of my question. Yeah. Uh, as you know, the Westerners have failed to openly denounce yeah, the part, as yeah, a terrorist yeah, group. Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, um, you know, when we say fail before that, let's explain. You know, when the whole world looks at the West, uh, looks at the West as, as a yardstick, as a standard, it's, it is for a reason. You know, at least there is what? This uh, democratic institutions, democratic culture, you know, rule of law freedom of the press, you know, judicial review, you know, fair and balanced and fair and balanced elections. These are what? These are the, the beacon of light. Why do people look at the West like America and like European countries? For, for, this, uh, for these human reasons. 
And in return also, democratic societies are obliged to do what? To be fair, you know, yeah. to, to be fair, to investigate things, to explore things. Yeah. And when they see something wrong, to call a spade a spade. Call a spade a spade. That's yeah. what the Ethiopian people expect. Yeah. Why the radio silence still? Why? If the Ethiopian government makes a mistake, you'll, you'll blast him left and right. And why, why be hesitant? Is there any special obligations to the rebel group? Is there? Why? Yeah. Because Western societies operate under principles, under legal norms, and if that's the case, we, as African developing countries, we expect Western countries to behave by applying the same no norms that was created. And that is lacking. And by the way, that is counterproductive to the West because people will say, oh, is that because we are Africans that they, they, they don't care or they just put uh, the double standard aside? Because there will be a lack of trust and confidence on the Western system. The West should defend its own principles for its own sake. And yeah, not for Ethiopia's sake. Right. Of course, when, if they do that, we'll be happy. But for their own sake. Because they have to prove it to the millions and billions of people who are living in developing societies that the West means business. You have to point, underline who has started it. Yeah. Right? You know, you cannot, you cannot just, you know, move like this. Because, you know, the, the, the third wave of war started by TPLF on such and such a date. It is empirical evidence, satellite communication, everything is there. Yeah. To verify for a great country like America, even the surveillance, the intelligence and everything, it could be verified. Yes. Say that has been started by TPLF. We underline the fact that TPLF should stop the current move towards the south or to other regional countries, stop and come around the table. It's a clear statement. Yeah. If it was if it was the other way around, do it on uh, the blame the Ethiopian government. Why not? It's mm. as simple as that. Simple as that. So for an Ethiopian and Ethiopians, it hurts. It really hurts because once again putting the victim and the perpetrator in the same level, in the same plane, in a way, uh, it really it really hurts because there's a whole lot of pain. The country is under pain. The country is really under pain. I repeat it. Yeah. Millions are asking the questions: Can we afford another war? Uh, is that is, it was that is that supposed to be the agenda of Ethiopia? Our agenda is to really fight poverty, you, you know, to to focus on socio-economic uh, uh, policies and the projects on education, on infrastructure, health. We have a lot of things to do. Yeah. What we expect from the government? Yes. Really, as uh, Ethiopians, yeah. Ethiopian Americans or what have you, you know. But that is really put on ice, and now we focus on uh, on on such issues, and now the government is cornered. And the people expect, by the way, from the government to act, to defend Ethiopia, Absolutely. to save Ethiopia. All Ethiopians, millions expect, I repeat, from the government. It is uh, the government, auto constitutionally and uh, by, by the rules and, and, uh, of, of any existence of political entity and the, the government as a government, the government is obliged. It has to. We expect the government to do what? to protect it, to protect sovereignty. Yeah. No government, no government would tolerate a, a, a rebellion. Not even the United States you know, when it comes to the civil law. Yeah. What was the cause of the civil law? You know? Rather than solve the problem in a civilized, cultured way, southern states refused and even took the offensive in Fort Sumter. What happened there in mm -hmm. South Carolina? Yeah. Yeah. That triggered, uh, the, 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 that exploded the whole thing. And then the Lincoln government has no choice to, but to do what? To maintain law, peace and order in the United States of America. It's as simple as that. Why does one accept it when it is for oneself? And why does not, uh, it's hard for countries to accept it when African countries like Ethiopia does it? I think it's the right of Ethiopia. And Ethiopians expect, I repeat, expect the government to do what? To safeguard, to save Ethiopia. Yeah. That's as simple as that. Simple as that. And yeah. I think that's exactly what the government is doing, you know, yeah. trying to ensure rule and yeah. order by exactly. uh, yeah. doing what it is uh, doing now. Yeah. Um, you know, mm. I have also this question. Yeah. What would be the benefits uh, or what would mm -hmm. the Western nations get? What benefit would they get if Ethiopia, uh, mm. you know, it gets if disintegrated? disintegrated yeah. Oh what what we need? No, would, no, there be, no, would there be any no, benefit at all? Western countries, they, they, they would lose big time. They wouldn't benefit anything out of it. Yeah. First, Ethiopia is too big to fail. So if I were them, it's better to play a constructive role by doing that and not helping 
uh, a rebel group which has been tested 27 years, I repeat, 27 years, the people of Ethiopia are exposed to the rule, to the tactic, to the strategy of the TPLF. People know inside out how they behave, their political behavior, how they make decisions, how they move, how they will and deal. Yeah. So if Ethiopia, Ethiopia fails as a big state, the whole Horn of Africa picture will, will change. It will affect all those countries around Ethiopia. It will affect first. And it, this means, if we look at the national geopolitical interest of uh, these advanced countries, you know, the Red Sea, Ethiopia with its uh, geographical location, the Red Sea, the Babel Mandeb, and then the, 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 the Gulf, and, uh, and then to the Persian Gulf, it will, have, it will have a negative impact and the West will not gain out of it. So rather, what will be a gain for the West is to do what? Really, make its own political analysis, make its own political calculations about the Ethiopian political system, the Kenyan, the Djibouti one, you know, look at the, 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 the people of Ethiopia, what they want, analyze the power equation in Ethiopia, and also accept for some, for some uh, gurus in, uh, in America and in some Western countries, those who call themselves experts and horn experts and the like, whom the Ethiopian public know, mm. which I don't want to name by name. They don't represent the USA as Americans or British or South Africans as uh, they represent themselves. But those who, who the gurus, you know, one should be very, very careful. One should be very, 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 very careful. One has to really, Ethiopia is a complicated country. One has to really dig deep and contribute in the stability and to, be, to restore peace in, in Ethiopia. By losing Ethiopia, there are so many things that will be complicated. Okay. By insisting, once again, by insisting, by latching on or by really insisting to, to stay on with TPLF, which is rejected by the Ethiopian people, they, they are supported to some extent by their own con constituents, but rejected by the majority is a big miscalculation on this or by this developed country. It's a big miscalculation. By capitalizing on that small group of people, they are losing the trust, the confidence of the Ethiopian people. Yeah. You'll never know in what direction the Ethiopian politics would move. You'll never know. Because we Especially live now, now that nowadays there are other you know, you sometimes you, you push re regimes to go to other, to other, you know, to other areas. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this miscalculation should stop. Okay. And they, okay. they should respect what? The will of the Ethiopian people. What's the will of the Ethiopian people? They could come and make a, a public um, opinion survey. Somehow, le let them send their uh, four or five of their professors from whatever country. Let them come and uh, make their own public opinion survey. The Ethiopian people will tell them point blank yeah. why, why they want to move, move on rather than move on with the TPLF. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah Professor, the other thing that uh, Ethiopia is still grappling with is the misinformation yeah. and disinformation, working in collaboration with some media uh, in Ethiopia as well. Yeah. Since you are uh, also a media, uh, yeah. media expert, yeah. I really want your uh, take here. So yeah. what should be done now yeah. as we speak in this regard? Yeah. And uh, what's, what are some of the things uh, uh, going forward from here uh, that yeah. need to be uh, applied by the yeah. international huge media outlets. What, what kind of uh, inputs should a they uh, a lot. have? Ra uh, a lot. For example, yeah. it's as simple as that. I know it's a budgetary and financial implication and issues. Rather than to report from Nairobi about Ethiopia, which is silly, I repeat, it is silly reporting from Nairobi about Ethiopia. Let them open even for six months or a year or two years, maybe until the crisis is over, their branch offices. Let them be closer to the Ethiopian people. Yeah. Let them be closer to the Ethiopian people. Ask, seek, try to seek the truth. Interview the Ethiopian public. You know, and also report at least closer. But what we see now is this is a typical kind of this uh, the imbalance of the international news flow. What we see is from the comforts of your office in Johannesburg or Cairo or or Nairobi, you know, or Washington D.C. or Paris or London. Uh, some of these journalists. Uh, report. Sometimes they send stringers. I think that is wrong. That should be reversed. Uh, secondly, uh, one should really make it a point to report objectively and professionally. Uh, some of these uh, media guys, 
some who work as consultants here again i i i i refrain from naming names um for whatever reasons for the last 30 years the tplf had outsmart or they have uh, gained friends some journalists they are they have played into the hands of the tplf they are still continuing to do that so i challenge uh, their supervisors and their bosses to do what to counter check what they say and to send other people to ethiopia and to to seek the truth what's going on yeah that is also another problem third is of course you know uh, uh, uh what, what the, the sad part is uh, when it comes to reporting uh when there is a another wave of war in ethiopia uh, you know they began you know journalists be begin to write things uh, and when they write things they start with a certain day uh, i wish they write two three paragraphs of background information as to who does what for what reason okay like tplf you yeah know? what's tplf what kind of system is it it's an albanian socialist marxist leninist even extreme hmm. this is the background yeah who are they fighting for they are fighting for only one ethnic group they still claim that and not for the whole Ethiopia. it's as simple as that and there are certain things the fact checking and empirical evidence i wish they do that if they do that at least at least uh, they will uh, they will um, uh, they will uh, will have some clarity of uh, the, the reality on the ground we'll have to leave it there thank you so much for your wonderful ideas professor yeah. as usual and uh, for your cooperation thank you uh, thank you for having me uh, allow me to wish uh, fellow ethiopians wherever they are whether in ethiopia or anywhere in the world in diaspora to wish them welcome uh, at the summit happy new year 2015 may 2015 bring peace prosperity and stability to to all ethiopians to all Ethiopians, when I say to all Ethiopians, I mean also to our brothers and sisters in Tigray. They are our brothers and sisters. Well, dear viewers, thank you as well for having been with us so far. And we'll definitely keep on updating you with latest uh, pieces of information unfolding here in Ethiopia. Uh, stay safe and take care.